when we're looking at a growing environment, we're looking at modifying the conditions. Many of these conditions I have here are kind of the six most popular ones. A lot of times we use equipment to do this, and this equipment can malfunction, so we need to be mindful of that. So we don't have these technical difficulties because the plants are not going to wait idly by. So the equipment. In any grow operation, there is a need to include equipment. Be sure to know what equipment is rated for and do not exceed the recommendations as this can shorten the life of the product. Uh, and this could be, uh, for example, water pumps or heaters. They usually have stated amounts or areas that they cover. And you want to try to hit that recommended amount or the low. If you exceed that, that's where you're shorting the life, shorting the life of that. Also be aware of maintenance that, that may be required with any piece of equipment. As often this can be very easy or minimal, but it doesn't mean it can be missed or forgotten about. So for example, just checking the oil in your car can be a very quick and easy task, but something that if forgotten about could lead to failure of the engine there. Now for uh, one thing we're trying to moderate typically in a grow area is heating. So generating heat will require some form of energy source. You'll need to make sure you have a consistent source of this energy, and this could be wood, this could be coal, this could be propane, this could be electricity even. Uh, uh, natural gas, regular gas, oh, there's a whole bunch of different options here. Make sure that you plan ahead uh, if you're for your heating source, especially as you get into colder winter conditions where you're likely to go through the required heat um, source much quicker. You don't want to be running out or ordering it when everyone else needs it. Prices will go up and it will be harder to get. Opposite of that, we have cooling. This can often be very costly for operations. It is possible to cool an outdoor grow space with shade netting, kind of like putting sunglasses over the plants. But keep in mind, this will reduce the overall light that reaches the plant. So be mindful of how much you're shading the plants. Fans do not cool the plant. They only mix the air and keep it moving, which can help increase transpiration to aid in the natural cooling process of the plant. True cooling will require an uh, air exchange as an air conditioner unit. Uh, split-level um, cooling units, uh, there's a lot of different options, but they typically consume a lot of electricity, so keep that in mind. Uh, for lights, uh, old bulbs. Bulbs reduce their efficiency slowly over time. As a result, growers will typically not notice a poorly producing bulb simply by looking at it. They'll still appear to be very bright. This is where PAR meters come in, uh, are highly recommended, as well as documentation of the purchase date and estimated number of hours of usage. You can write the purchase date right on the bulb itself, or keep that as part of your records, so you kind of know about when you should be changing that out on the calendar based on the hours you plan on using that bulb. Reflectors, can't forget it. One of the of the bulbs, can't forget about the reflectors here. There's two different options. Um, reflectors can also reduce their efficiency over time. Bulbs need to be changed more frequently, but changing the reflectors should be considered about every two to four years. The best way to know if the, or estimate your reflector efficiency is to test with a PAR meter each time you add a new bulb. Keep that two feet away, let that bulb warm up, test the PAR uh, at the plant level, and every time you add a new bulb, test it out and see, based on documentation and records, see if it's the same. That'll tell you the amount of light being reflected, uh, and if it becomes below a certain amount, you may want to consider changing out that reflector you have. The photo period determines the stage of growth the plant will be in, and if there's a problem with the um, amount of light, or really you want to think about it as hours of continuous darkness, this can create plants that are not in the proper stage that the grower expects. Purchase some quality timers and also check them to ensure their accuracy during the entire growth cycle. Some growers will prefer these analog style ones because they can physically see if it gets off. Digital ones, you kind of got to be there to be able to tell. There's no real physical means you can go through and take a look at. So again, they both work just fine. Uh, but some growers do prefer the analog for that reason, but have some way of checking uh, to ensure your plants are under the proper photo period. Humidity is important because depending on the growth stage, the plant will determine the proper percentage you want to maintain. When plants are younger and smaller, you want to have a higher humidity. As they get older and start to produce the buds, we want to reduce that humidity. So again, having control over this, uh, emptying containers, um, having a way to regulate the humidity are all important things to, um, to consider and also monitor. Water pumps. Often pumps are a necessary component, but growers will commonly undersize the pumps, causing an increase in wear and tear, reducing their overall life. If you want to oversize pumps to be sure and continually monitor them, since they'll typically burn out without little warning. Also, set up a schedule to ensure regular cleanings of filters. So if you are running a complex operation here and you have some filters, those filters may need to be changed at certain times. We just go through and monitor them depending on the quality of water that you have, whether it's a sediment filter or a chlorine filter. 
Fans are great for air circulation, but they can die without warning. So you also want to be mindful of how old they are, what their expected life may be. Watch the blades and cages to ensure that they're cleaned as needed to maintain the peak efficiencies. You typically accumulate a lot of dust in the fan blades, and that can cause uh, them to kind of overheat and work harder than they need to, which can vastly reduce their expected life. 